Hello and welcome to part two of the CA Service Management Containerization video series. In this video, we will provide a demonstration of the configuration files required for deploying CA Service Management containers, how to generate passwords through a generated secret script, and an overview of the Kubernetes dashboard. We will also cover the deployment of CA Service Desk Manager, XFlow interface, search servers, and other components and containers. Please note that CA Service Management Containers provide the capability of configuring RASA for the Virtual Analyst in CA Service Management. For more information, see CA Service Management 17.3 documentation. Now, let's join in on the demonstration. The first step is to download and extract one of these four tar.gz files as shown here based on the entitlements. I will download and extract one of these configuration files. Here you can see the CA service management configuration files required for solution deployment. To start with, the first step I need to do is rename the containers config dpl file to containers config file. This is required. The scripts require the containers config file and this file must be modified. The containers config file needs to be updated with configuration values for CA service desk manager and CA service catalog for Kubernetes deployment. In the containers config file, I will review the license terms and conditions and set it to 1 to show that I agree with these terms. Set the ingress host and the URL address that will be exposed so that users can access Service Desk in the entire CA Service Management solution. If SLL is required, enter corresponding details, then provide MDB information. CAEEM information is optional for Service Desk Manager but required for CA Service Catalog deployment. CA Process Automation is optional for both CA Service Catalog and CA Service Desk Manager. Enter telemetry details if applicable. Let's move on to the next configuration file, containers underscore images dot config. It contains details about the images such as links to the Docker repository where all CA Service Management container images are shared, version of the images. Making any changes to this file is not recommended. The containers recommended config contains the recommended configuration values for deployment. Update the appropriate attribute values as per environment requirements. In the containers recommended config file, I exported a few configuration flags that are used in the Kubernetes configuration to a config file. They are already preset. Follow the CA Service Management documentation to see how you can set values in the configuration files. For example, to enable SSL, enable these SSL flags. Set the SSL redirect to true. SSL certificate name, any name can be given. Then, provide the path to the key insert file. Provide the ingress port number. For non-SSL environments, use 31080 and for HTTPS, Use the port 31443. The next step after making all configuration changes is to set passwords for the components enabled in the configuration files. The secrets.sh file asks for the username and passwords for all of the components enabled in the configuration file. It then generates a secret.sh is the first command you will run when starting the actual deployment. Once the passwords are generated, we will run the apply.sh script to initiate the deployment process. Apply.sh is a container installer and script which will create siteful sets, config maps, persistent volumes, and services to prepare the service management environment for container deployment on Kubernetes. Execute apply.sh to deploy CA Service Desk Manager. Next, we will look at install catalog. CA Service Catalog deployment should be done only after SDM background and application servers are up and running. 
run the apply.sh catalog command to install CA service catalog. As mentioned earlier, apply.sh and apply.sh space catalog commands should be run sequentially after CA SDM is up. This is to avoid concurrency issues and access to the database, since the database is shared in a solution environment. So this is how simple it is to configure and install the resources in Kubernetes. After apply.sh command is executed, all of the stateful sets are going to be created. By default, they all have zero except SDM background server and CA service catalog. As you can see, they are starting automatically. Egress, as mentioned earlier, is an optional component. Administrators or users are not required to install it. Let's now discuss a few Kubernetes best practices. Given the ease of scaling Kubernetes, it is recommended to scale horizontally. It is recommended to have, let's say, two pods instead of a single pod. That is because if one pod goes down, the entire solution goes down. Having more pods ensures more redundancy. Resource utilization by additional pods is not significant and depends on the load of pods. To ensure the pods are starting up and all processes are coming up properly and are healthy, a liveliness or the readiness probe is put into place. The liveliness probe is using the health servant to keep a check on the pods and the processes and ensuring everything is in a healthy state. Values in the readiness probe can be adjusted to decide when a probe should start and the interval which the pod should be monitored. The sooner it starts, the sooner it will add the pods to the load balancer. The liveliness probe is used by the Kubernetes to know if the pod gets into a bad state after being ready. If it goes into a bad state, Kubernetes automatically deletes the pod and lets it recreate. So, the pod is going to self-heal. Time taken for pods to start depends on the size of deployments and volume of data. If run for the first time, CDM background server will take even 20 minutes to initiate as it loads the data. Whenever there's a change in a configuration in the Chasm Docker installer, run apply sh and restart relevant pods. If changes were made for CA Service Manager, the pods must be restarted. Now let's discuss debugging the installer scripts and a few troubleshooting tips. If something does not work, review and verify these three configuration files and the values in it. Ensure that you have provided the appropriate values as intended. For more information, please refer to the CA Service Management documentation. Users can run commands inside the pods like PDM status or the failover commands. For failover, in this case, stmbg-1 is the background server, and running the command will make the stmbg-0 as the background server. If I want to see what YAML files are generated, I can set the delete TMP files to 0, 1 to 0. Then, in each folder, for example stm, after running apply.sh, there will be a TMP folder with all the YAML files that are loaded. These are YAML files but most of them are templates and CA Service Management generates another YAML file in the TMP folder. That's another way that an administrator can troubleshoot and see if the correct information is being loaded in Kubernetes. If I have to run more than one command, then I should sh into the pod and run a command similar to access the pod show here in this slide. Notice the dash IT flag and then bash. For indexing, you can do it with just one command search server. For ingress-related issues, by default the ingress is in the stateful set, namespace, pods, ingress controller. Look at the logs and verify all the URL requests. They provide an account of when it was sent, what is going to be sent, what service is being mapped and so on. Ensure that the persistent volume provisioner is working correctly. During deployment if there are issues, check the TMP chasm folders. The service desk logs whenever a pod starts up, service desk for example, is going to give you all the details. This is pretty much the logs from CA Service Management Common Installer. These are the persistent volumes in my environment that are generated for CA Service Management Solution deployment. I had only two application servers App0 and App1 and for background I have BG0.
If I start BG1, then another one will be created with name STMBG1. Pretty much all the tools that are available in the CA Service Management Common Installer are supported for Kubernetes. PDM status commands, any BOP login commands. It is just that you need to access it in interactive mode and run the commands. This is recommended since we need more commands than just a single command. As I mentioned, for failover, you are going to run the command in non-interactive mode and do the failover. kubectl command needs to be executed from the cluster. Most of the time, the master node has the kubectl command. For CA Service Desk Manager, now let's see how we can support customization or support out-of-the-box configuration files. This is Chasm Docker NX root and then, the pod name. Each pod has its own NX root path name, its own BOP CFG, the log files, site and not the site mods. Site modes is in NX root dash all location. Site mods, attachments, EBR files are not specific to a pod but is shared across all pods. For example, if you want to update the logs to enable logging for Catalina based Tomcat, use the file in the Simlinks folder. Simlinks is a folder where you can dump a file where it is going to be mapped automatically when the pod starts up in location path that is after the Simlinks folder. Everything that is before or after Simlinks can be considered as the NX root path. The files are automatically generated. You can see the OTB or out of the box files as well. One file with OTB and other is without OTB. The one without OTB is the one that is being used by CA Service Desk Manager. Whenever the script is run, if there is a file in the image that was delivered by the image, then copy it in the Simlinks and rename it to OTB so that administrators or users can see what was there before a file was applied on the system. The files can be compared and merged. This is more useful during upgrades or a migration. If the OTB files are missing, it means that the file was not packaged with the image. Now, I will cover a use case for the Simlinks folder. Create a keystore using the PDM Keystore MGR Perl script. Keystore is used by PDM Mail, PDM Mail Leader, and PDM RPC. Whenever the command is executed, NX Keystore reference is added to NX ENV and NX Keystore file is created in the PDM Conference folder. If I restart the pod now after running the command number 1, I will lose the NX and Keystore information. In order to preserve them, administrators need to create a PDM conference folder under Simlinks and then copy the TPL file, NXENVTPL and then the key store. After the pod is restarted, you can see how everything looks. Here, you can see this does not have an OTB file as it did not exist in the image. Validate that everything is working fine. Run the command with the list flag. Let's now see how Xflow and underlying microservices can be deployed. The design for microservices is such that each microservice has its own entity. Each microservice has its own pod. It can be scaled up or down as required. In addition to this, CA Service Management also provides RASA and Elastic Searching Containers. To do any work on the microservice, you could either run it interactively or non-interactively. Perform initial load to prepare the search server when indexed data that are imported from CA SDM database. If you want to know what scripts are available, you can do an LS to list out the items. If you want to access the pod for performing advanced configurations or any other such requirements, you can just run the pod in interactive mode. CA Service Management Administrators need to download joint.js from the third-party DVD, extract the SS and JavaScript file and overwrite the files in the xflow config folder with the downloaded ones. Run apply.sh after modifying the xflow config files and then restart the pods. If you download the joint.js after you've deployed CA Service Management, you will still need to run apply.sh. Any changes that administrators perform on the Chasm Docker installer must always be followed by running the applied.sh script. Chasmconfig.js file is loaded by Insights Microservices and out of the box. Administrators are not required to make any changes, but if you need to add or update changes to this file, ensure to run applied.sh after making the changes. Each microservice has its own log4j properties and logback.xml files. These files are pre-configured to log to a file and send out output to the console so that the Docker can log the worker 
or kubectl command can work and get the logs. These files are merged for each pod independently. The log4j and the logback.xml logging are going to be merged into one. As mentioned earlier, run apply.sh after modifying the files and to restart the pods. This is the location as seen on the slide, where CA Service Management maintains all the microservices logs. Ensure that you are using kubectl 1.15.x or above versions. Since Kubernetes dashboard does not support 1.15 kubectl, it's recommended to use Kubernetes dashboard 2.0. In CASDM Advance Availability, we do not support running Web Screen Painter outside the background server. For Kubernetes we made some changes to support Web Screen Painter from a different path as it installs the user interface, UI, packages. Stateful set PDM WSP can be scaled to one. We do not support more than one pod for WSP. Once the pod starts, administrators can access the pod and run PDM server. This is going to set the VNC server passwords. This cannot be done in the container's image. Administrators can connect to the VNC viewer by passing the external host which is the FQDN for VNC link and the SDM WSP VNC port which are configured. VNC port is provided in the recommended config file and by default is 31110. Then open terminal and run PDM underscore WSP. This information is also available in the pods. Connect to the pod, run the VNC server to adjust the resolution. Run the command from the terminal to set the resolution of the console. The resolution is already set but I am going to set it again by running the PDM WSP command. This is how the administrators can customize WSP. With this I will now end the second series of containerization video. Thank you for watching this video.